what's up guys my name is Zach and today I am driving the 2025 Chevy Equinox LT all-wheel drive up front is a 1.5 liter turbocharged inline four and down below is an eight speed automatic transmission now I am super excited to be driving this new Equinox because it's all new for 2025 model year it looks drastically different I think it looks a lot better than the outgoing model. They've changed the engines, they've changed the transmissions, they've changed everything about the Equinox. So forget what you thought you knew about the Equinox because this is not that, this is something different. But if you would like to submit your own vehicle, you can head on over to my website, zachpradle.com slash submit. It's a quick and easy submission form. It takes under a minute to fill out and I come out to you. And huge thank you to Ray Chevrolet for letting me borrow their brand new Equinox for this video. I've reviewed tons of vehicles from them, and if you'd like to check out their inventory, you can do so in the description below. But let's get back to that 1.5 liter turbocharged four-cylinder under the hood. Well, right off the bat, I don't love this engine. It makes about 175 horsepower, and it works decent around town. I don't feel like it's overly sluggish around town, and 175 horsepower is decently responsible respectable, especially for a sub two liter engine. But I just worry about in terms of reliability, such a small engine working hard for this bigger car might cause issues down the road. Now I have no paperwork or backing saying that it will or won't. That's just my gut talking. So we'll have to see. Like I said, paired to it is an eight speed automatic transmission. And it's actually important that this is all wheel drive because the front wheel drive Chevy Equinoxes get a CVT or continuously variable transmission. When you move up to the all-wheel drive, you actually get a true eight speed, which is going to be more reliable and would be my transmission of choice. So I would highly, highly recommend seeking out the all wheel drive. Even if you live in a warm climate and don't intend on using the all wheel drive, the reliability is going to be a little bit better. Last but not least about the drivetrain, as I just touched on about 80,000 times, it is all wheel drive. So how does it feel to drive the new Equinox? Well, it does feel more spacious and more planted than the outgoing Equinox. I'll be the first person to tell Tell you I didn't like the older Equinox. I drove the RS, I drove a rental car spec. I wasn't a fan of either one. Well, this actually feels more put together. It feels like a better car than the outgoing Equinox, and that's exciting to see. Visibility is pretty good for an SUV. Throttle isn't very responsive, like I said, because of that 1.5 turbo, but other than that, for a daily driver, this is a nice spot to be in. With that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I get a completely digital gauge cluster that we're seeing in almost all of Chevy's new products like the Silverado EV, Blazer EV, and of course this vehicle's sister car, the Equinox EV. I like the layout of it. I think it's easy to read in all sunlights. It's overcast here today, but I've driven cars with this gauge cluster in the sun and they're easy to read as well. So I'm happy to see that. On the steering wheel on the left, we have our cruise control options and L. This is actually to put it into a lower gear. Kind of interesting there. And on the right, we have our voice commands, music options, pages, and heated steering wheel. Off to the left, we do have a climate control vent, our power parking brake, all wheel drive button, auto holding brake, auto start stop on and off, and our gauge dimmer switch. And moving on to the door, we have our latch to get in and out with the lock and unlock button, power mirrors, and power windows. Moving into the center, we do get the new infotainment system from Chevy. This of course is the Google system. However, we still do get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It is still available here in the LT, which is lovely to see. And overall, I'm really, really growing to like this operating system. It's clean, it's concise, it's fresh and modern. I have a camera button so I can see around the vehicle, which I absolutely love, especially driving SUVs. It's always a pain in the neck to try to park them. Down below that, we have two climate control vents and our climate controls themselves. These are physical climate controls. I didn't think when I started this career 10 years ago that I would be thanking the Lord for physical climate controls, but I am here in this Equinox. Love to see this heated seats, fan speed, auto, dual zone climate, all your fixins found here, and they are all at the push of a button 
instead of the tap of a screen. However, you can run the climate controls through the screen if you want, but I do not want to. Down below, we do have a USB-C and USB-A, one of the many portions of the vehicle where it's clear that this is a switch over generation, and we'll talk more about that towards the end of the video. But then we have some cubby space down below, a wireless charger, cubby in the center, and the cup holders, so we will do a big friggin' bottle test. And I've been driving the Equinox around with the big friggin' bottle in the cup holder, and it hasn't fallen over. It's a little snug, a little bit snugger than I would want, but at the end of the day, that's a pass. Now, you won't find the gear shifter down here because it's actually up on the column. Chevy is really going back to its roots with the old B-body caprices of the 90s, and so you actually get a column shifter. You do also get a center console, not too much going on in there, and then we'll talk about the seats. The seats are a nice perforated leather. I actually quite enjoy them. They're heated and power operated, which is all I really need. However, speaking of seats, we do have a second row here in the Equinox. So let's go do a backseat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 2025 Chevy Equinox LT. And a couple of things to note. First of all, this is my driving position, which I actually even moved up a little bit forward so I could fit properly. And it offers a lot of rear leg room. This is a great size of vehicle. And you're gonna find this sizing also with the EV Equinox and the EV Blazer, where you have tons of leg room in the back, which is very, very nice. I do have two USB-C outlets back here, so only USB-C in the back seat, but USB-A and C in the front seat. I do get this fold down center console, two cup holders, the nice gray and black leather carries on back here, and it's on the door cards as well. We have, we have some LED lights up top, but other than that, nothing too, too crazy to report. Now, the Equinox is still a two-row vehicle. However, they have freshly redone the Traverse, which I will leave at the end of this video. That is a three-row if you are looking for that. However, let's hop into the very back and take a quick look at the trunk and cargo space, and then we'll talk about the looks. All right, so we're on the back of the all-new Equinox all-wheel drive pop the button like that. It does have a power operated tailgate for the LT. And here is the rear cargo space. Nothing really too insane to brag about anything like that. We do have a 12 volt outlet off to the right. LED lights found around, which isn't an industry standard and it should be. I don't know why it isn't, but it is here on the Equinox. And we do have some storage down below here of which you can see it down there. I'm not going to pull it all the way out. You do get a spare tire. Again, not an industry standard anymore, but really, really should be. So you do get a spare tire here in the Equinox. Other than that, here is the rear cargo space, which I think is very, very adequate in this segment. Now we got to talk about the looks. And like I said in the beginning of this video, I absolutely adore the look of this car just because it's so much better than the outgoing Equinox. It's like Chevy finally woke up and said, hey, Let's build an attractive car. And they did it. They did it very, very well. I mean, this is a Picasso where the old one was a crayon drawing. It's good. It's very, very good. However, with all of that being said, let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think driving the brand new 2025 model year Chevy Equinox? Well, this is such an upgrade over the outgoing Equinox. My only major issue with it is that 1.5 liter turbo or the CVT if you option that. I don't like CVTs. I've never liked CVTs. They just don't have the reliability as a more traditional transmission. So this gets the traditional transmission. All you have to worry about is that engine, which might go the distance, might not. I don't have any paperwork to back up either argument. I'm just giving my opinion. I like this. I, I think this is a pretty decent vehicle. And for a daily driver, there's not much more that you would need outside of this. However, I do want to talk about Chevy as a whole right now because I recently recently reviewed a brand new Chevy Equinox, but it was the Equinox EV. That shares almost nothing with this vehicle. It shares a size, pretty much. They are very similar sized, but that is a completely electric drivetrain car. This is a gasoline powered car with not even a hybrid option. And so, like I said, with the split USBs of USB-C and USB-A, Chevy has their foot in both worlds right now. This, well, this is the old world. We've done gasoline engines for the last 110 years. And 
it's proving that Chevy is still dedicated to offering gasoline engines for at least the next couple of years, and they're still modifying and changing and trying to upgrade them. There's still that passion there. But we also have the Equinox EV now. That's a step towards tomorrow. That's the way that the market seems to be going, at least for the moment. EVs are quote unquote the future, and while I'm not sure that they are, Chevy is offering a futuristic pick. So what would I choose between the gasoline Equinox and the electric Equinox now that I've had the privilege to drive both of them for the same amount of time? I would choose this. I would choose the gasoline Equinox. Couple reasons for it. I'm just not big on the infrastructure and the issues that come along with electric cars. I don't have a charger at home and so I recently had an electric car and I would just sit at the Walmart parking lot for hours and hours and hours. I also feel like this car is just better put together. It feels more like a daily driver and something that would be more dependable than the electric car. The electric Equinox is fun, it's great, looks good as well, but I just still enjoy the practicality of the gas. And so Chevy's offering you both of them at the same time. It's rare that you get crossover years where a manufacturer will offer two separate products in the similar lane at the same time. Well, Chevy's doing that. And so if you're not a fan of that 1.5 liter turbo, the eight speed auto, or even the CVT, don't worry, Chevy has another offer for you, the Equinox EV. If you don't like electric cars, if you don't think EVs are the future, if you hate charging cars and trying to find the closest charging station, don't worry. Chevy has the Equinox gasoline vehicle for you. They give you options, and that's what we need more of in this world. I don't think the end goal is electric cars. I don't think the end goal is saying just fossil fuels. It's gonna be somewhere in the middle and it's gonna be a mix of both. And if you walk onto Ray Chevrolet's lot right now, you will find both brand new, fresh off the truck. That's not something that's easy to find. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Ray Chevrolet here in Fox Lake, Illinois for letting me borrow their brand new Equinox. As you can see, this is their one promotional vehicle. As I'm filming this, there are no new Equinoxes at the dealership. I have the only one. So I appreciate them trusting me with this vehicle to show off to you today. Ray Chevrolet has been a wonderful dealership to work with over the last year or so that I've been filming with them. Can't recommend them enough. If you're in the Fox Lake area, please go check them out or you can find their inventory in the description below. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.